everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, before we begin, um, it's a new year, so I would like to um, tell everybody, hey, this, regardless of where you are, family, friends, uh, wherever you are in the world, have a safe and enjoyable new year. I hope it be uh, beneficial and fruitful to you in many ways. Today, I want to get into uh, what the federal benefits the, uh, the government offers. There's a lot of, uh, at times you have a lot of new employees that uh, may not be aware of some of the benefits that they're entitled to. Uh, so I just want to share um, some of those benefits. Um, uh, before we begin, uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel as I'll be putting out a new video every week. Uh, let's get into this. The federal government offers a, a slew of benefits to employees from the first day of employment. Employees uh, may have unique um, needs or plans, so it'd be vitally important uh, to know what those entitlements are. So if you were hired after 1984, employees all fall under um, what is known in the workplace as FERS, and that is the Federal Employee Retirement System. Uh, and some of those ben benefits include uh, your Federal Employee Health Benefit Program, FEHB, uh, -E in the workplace. And this is where the employee, when they come on board, you have approximately 60 days to make an election of what type of health benefit plan you are interested in. Uh, HMO, PMO, PPO, you may want to have um, Aetna, Umana, whatever in medical coverage that you like to have. Um, there's also uh, international um, plans, if you will. So I have an international plan and I've had it for years um, that assists me when I travel or when I am uh, working abroad, I do have uh, that type of medical coverage. One of the other categories is Federal Employee Group Life Insurance, uh, known in the workplace as FEGLI. And that basically is your standardized health insurance. Uh, within that 60 days, you may also elect to get um, different programs or different multipliers, depending uh, on, on your needs. Uh, very inexpensive because it falls under uh, the group. Now, keeping in mind that uh, after the 60 days, I need to make the special note, after the 60 days, you may not gain any coverage if you don't take some type of action unless there's a significant change in your family, like you got married or you had kids or whatever the practice are, you will have to wait to open season, which usually falls uh, mid-December, I'm sorry, mid-November into December where you can elect to change. The other one is um, the Federal Long-Term Care Insurance Program, which is FLTCIP. And that is beneficial for those that are young and do not have any, uh, say, disabilities. It helps you later on in life when you start planning your additional need coverages um, when you're unable uh, to do normal activities. Then we're going to move on into the flexible spending account. Uh, this is one of the things that uh, not many employees jump on, but it is also available. Uh, this is a payroll tech advantage financial account program where employees can, uh, let's say, allocate uh, money towards uh, let's say, uh, anticipated medical costs. Um, whether you use the money or not, only $550 can be rolled over to the next year. Um, it's one of those things you use or lose. So if you don't use the money that you anticipate using within that year, you do lose it, which is a kind of a disadvantage uh, of the program. Um, so please keep that in mind. Um, the other thing will be dental insurance. Uh, just like your health insurance, you have a uh, uh, a slew of uh, companies to select from a different program. So yeah, you might want to talk to the benefit specialist to determine which one uh, meets your needs. Uh, also, you have vision insurance. Uh, vision insurance is very inexpensive. Uh, so you might want to inquire as to which coverage again that you'll have. Um, one of the very, very interesting programs that most employees may not be aware of is the wellness program. And the wellness program um, is where supervisors can approve you uh, to go to uh, take three hours of uh, time off per week to go to the gym. 
Uh, this is your, kind of your fitness and your mental health program. So please inquire about uh, uh, these programs. I think it's quite beneficial. Uh, this is the government allowing you basically to take an hour off to go and exercise and uh, utilize. Some agencies have facilities that you may be able to utilize. So uh, free memberships. So I think it's uh, beneficial for you to take this program as well. Okay, the next uh, area we're going to get into is vacation time. Uh, vacation time um, is a little bit different for um, employees. Um, you can get up to 30 days per year or 240 hours. Um, if you don't take any leave whatsoever, um, you're still going to get, um, um, your time can be rolled over. 240 hours can roll over to the next year if you don't use the time uh, you will lose it uh, there's no need to utilize your time we all need to recharge our batteries from time to time so um, do me a favor and if there's something that uh, uh, unless you don't need to take your time off and kind of recharge your batteries uh, the interesting interesting thing about vacation time is if you have um, less than three years of service um, you basically get about four hours of vacation time, um, but less from one year to three years, you get four years from three years to 15 years. You get about six hours of vacation time per pay period. And if you have 15 or more years of federal service, you get about eight per pay period. So just imagine taking that, uh, vacation time, you can, it kind of racks up pretty quickly, right? So to keep that in mind. Uh, now, if you don't utilize the time uh, upon retirement, they will cash out that time, uh, which is a little bit different than sick time. Uh, sick time, all employees get about four hours per pay period, um, and that continuously acc uh, accrues as you go through your federal career. Uh, sick time, you do not get cashed out or paid out on. What ends up happening would be, let's say I give you an example. So let's say you had uh, you are ready for retirement and you had 19 years and 11 months, but you had about 30 days of sick time remaining. They will tack that 30 days on the back end to make it 20 years. So although you may not get cashed out on the sick time, um, you do get, get it on the back end. Of course, just like uh, mo most agencies, um, you do get uh, overtime and calm time. Some, some agencies may not require it, but generally your, your mission support personnel, those that are working in the field, your law enforcement and fire emergency services, or if they stand up some type of operation, uh, overtime is uh, required and it is paid by um, the mandates, uh, so, you know, a time and a half, of course. Uh, we also get um, holidays, federal holidays. You get about 15 federal holidays per year. And depending on if you are working that day, if you might be one of those um, mission support personnel, you may be required to work on a holiday uh, and you will get paid a double time for that, especially in your law enforcement arena. Then we have the federal, I'm sorry, your know, Family Member Leave Act of 1993. This is where the, uh, the employers are required to provide employees with job protected, unpaid, qualified leave if they have like a let's say uh, a qualified medical or family reason where they need to be off, this is something that they also provide. Okay, uh, the next thing we're gonna get into here um, is one of them, I think the, one of them other than your medical and dental be benefits and things that uh, are important. I think the next one will be what's called the, uh, the Thrift Savings Plan, known, also known in the workplace as a TSP. Uh, this is similar to a 401k plan um, within the civilian sector. Um, basically, you can start collecting at 59 and a half. You can select your traditional or your uh, standard Roth programs. Um, so this is basically like an, another retirement vehicle that you can use. Uh, please take advantage of it uh, to, inc to include the fact that when you get past 50, you can do the catch up. So, and that catch up period can be extended from year to year. So you might want to reach out to your benefit specialist to find out what that maximum is per, you can so put in per year. Um, the interesting part about it, whether you would like to put into the program or not, the federal government is still going to put 1% um, uh, within the G fund for you. Uh, interestingly, also when you elect to, to contribute to the TSP program, 
the federal government does match it up to 3%. So I think that that's a, a, another great benefit to the employee. Uh, the next program would be the educational program. So depending on uh, what position you hold, there are some uh, college level programs that you can sign up for and the ADC will pay for it. There is some uh, criteria that has to be met. So kind of reach out to your supervisor and uh, try to identify which programs can assist you. To include, uh, there are programs that if you need to, uh, let's say, um, um, let's say for example, you are uh, you have some financial obligations that you want to pay back. Some programs kind of allow you to pay it back, but again, there's some criteria the way if they pay off a certain program portion of your uh, educational costs that you may have to extend for a period of time with the agency to make sure that that is paid back. The other thing is certifications and trainings. So depending on what uh, category you fall into, uh, it may require you to get different certifications uh, for your position. Let's say IT may, may be a specific criteria. You can sign up for that um, training program and the agency will support you on it, especially if it's part of your IDP. Um, the last thing I'm going to mention today, because I want to keep it kind of short and brief, is um, the government travel card. The government travel card, uh, from time to time, you may have to travel for the agency and they assist you with getting this uh, federal government uh, credit card. It is utilized for uh, traveling, um, paid for your hotel, rent a car, food, and things of that. Uh, it is one of the things in the federal government you can get in trouble for. This is not something for you to abuse. Um, you can only utilize this credit card while you're traveling on official duties. Uh, this is not a free ticket to go sh shopping and buying televisions and clothes and things of that nature. So become familiar with it. It's a good benefit that you don't have to spend your money while you're traveling for the government. And But again, please do not abuse that. Like I said, this is going to be a short video today. Um, I hope you found the information informative. Again, not all inclusive. There may be a lot of other benefits out there that uh, you might want to become familiar. I just want to kind of hit you with the top 15 things uh, that I think would be beneficial to you. Um, if you have any additional comments or questions, don't forget to leave them down in the comment bar and I'll answer all your questions. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And lastly, Again, it's New Year's Day. Please enjoy your time with your family and have a safe and enjoyable day.